And okay, it's saying, hmm, you're, you're going to open world imagery. What do you want to do with it? Well, I want to open it. Okay. What's it going to do? It's going to pull down data from the cloud, right? You've all heard about cloud computing. You're using cloud computing, right? Every time you put photos on Picasso Web or you got uh, you know, various things up online, right? You're using the cloud. And same thing here. We're using cloud technology saying, we don't need to store all this base map images on, on our own computers. We're fine with having some of that stuff on the, on, the, on the web. Now, good news, bad news for you as an instructor, right? It's the same thing we talked about way, way back at 9 o'clock this morning when you were using WebGIS. And we said, OK, you know, there's good things. But then there's things that are of concern, you know, like, oh, what if I'm teaching a lesson and the, there's no internet connection, you know? So that's why, before I knew truly how awesome Mr. Morehouse is, I said, what if there's no internet connection here? I'll download little pieces and save them. Now, I still think that's a good idea. Anytime you're doing this, um, yeah, you know, you don't want to get into downloading little chunks of aerial photos and satellite images and topo maps from all over the world. But I think for, you know, it's it's just kind of safe practice to to have something locally. It's kind of like when the when Windows first came around and I was always shelling out to DOS. Oh, I can I can copy in DOS. I'll shell out to DOS. I don't do that anymore. And I think someday we won't be doing this. We won't be saving things locally like this. But I think just as we're transitioning, it's uh, just something I do. Okay. So, but as I did that, go back to your, your ArcMap session. And all I did was file, add data from ArcGIS online, right? Oh, what do I have now? I've got a satellite image. Looks like I had before, but it's a, it's a bigger area. And if I, ooh, if I go out again, oh, drawing world imagery. Go up to the cloud, pull that piece down. I don't have just a little box anymore, right? I want to make sure you, you folks understand the difference between I have little chunks of photos and satellite images and right on my local drive. But now I'm out on the cloud. So how did I generate this for you all to use today? I just I saved pieces of the cloud images and topo maps to the local drive, sent it to Jesse, he loaded it on these computers. So the good news, bad news. This is a little slower to draw, right, because we're pulling it down from the cloud and everybody's doing it at the same time. But on the other hand, we're not confined to just Pagosa Springs. We can pan over to Durango, right, or Cortez, or Broomfield. Ooh, ooh, Eastern Slope. No, it's a good place too. Anyway, um, so does that make sense? That's all I did. As I went to ArcGIS Online, pulled down those satellite images and topo maps and save them locally. Cool. But I want you to know that, let's say you started with a base map or some, some GPS points. Turn off these other, turn off all base images. Let's say you came in with your students from the field and you had this. You uploaded your points, which we'll do in a minute, and you had that. And you're like, I want a base, base map. All you do, file, add data from ArcGIS Online, and you're good to go. I know it's kind of difficult to appreciate because we have it so good in 2010, but when we used to do these workshops and we'd have to go out to like the state of Colorado DNR and all these other sites, the county uh, planning department, and trying to get aerial photos and put them all into the right projection, and this is just makes life so easy. File, add data from ArcGIS Online. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. That's all you do. We want to go back now and plot your points and then have you put your points on top of this map, right? That's the goal in this next segment. What I've started to do is create a spreadsheet. So go into Excel and create a new spreadsheet. What I started to do was to put in the column names, right? That's going to be your first line. I map snow depth and an object. So I'm going to name these columns appropriately. Point, I'm going to call it ABC, you can call it 1, 2, 3, doesn't matter, some sort of label. Latitude, longitude, 
the object, some sort of a text field, right? I called mine object, and I'm at snow depth. And also for the um, for the numeric field, it's good to put the it's good to put the meet, the uh, the units, right? So that later on, it's months down the road. Uh, I don't know if these are in feet or meters or inches or whatever. It's good to know that. The only thing that um, to keep in mind here is that your field names cannot have any spaces in them. Okay? Underscores are okay, but don't put any spaces. If it's a text field, it can have spaces, yes. I have front space door. So happy inputting. Cool. All right, so now, hmm, I want to add my data, right? I want to add my Excel spreadsheet to my table of contents or my layers here. So there's really three steps. Key it in, add it to your map, map it. Key it into Excel, add it to your map as a, as an, as a spreadsheet. That's step two. Step three, map the spreadsheet. The reason why add it to your map and map it are two, two separate steps will be clear in this, next, in this next thing. Once you get to your spreadsheet, you should see this. Hmm, what is this sheet one, sheet two? Anytime you do anything with Excel, right, you have those sheet one, two, and three, even if you don't use them in Excel. You always, that's the default, right? It has those tabs at the bottom of those spreadsheets. Next time you go into Excel, take a look. They're, they're always there. You might not ever use sheet two and sheet three, but they're always there, and that's why they're here, because they, they still get saved. But all my data is in sheet one, right? So sheet one, I'm going to add that. OK, cool. Now, here's a good test. You've added sheet one. Right click on it and open it. And um, if it's good, it'll look like this, right? It'll look like uh, it did in Excel. It'll look with real latitude, latitude and longitude values. And it'll have your, your um, object and your snow depth or your tree height or whatever you've mapped. If it doesn't look good, it's got some misalignment and goofy stuff missing, well, then you've got to go to it, back to Excel and fix the problem. So what have we done? We've, we've created the spreadsheet. We've added it to the table of contents. We don't see it on the map yet, though, right? Because it's not a GIS layer. It's just a spreadsheet that's added to the table of contents. So um, the same could be said for, let's say I took a ground photograph and I added it over here. Well, it's not really a GIS layer. You can add stuff, uh, but it's not mappable yet. That's why we have the step three. I've got it here. It looks good. I don't need to look at the table anymore. So I'm going to exit that. I've got this thing here. If I don't know how to do something inside a GIS, what do I do? If I right-click on this thing, there is a display XY data. So, yeah, you're right. The main thing was right-click on it. If it's not in properties, look somewhere else. And in this case, it makes sense because you've got XY data, right? If you come back to with the students, the good old Cartesian coordinate system, that's what you've got, right? It's a latitude-longitude. And the latitude is uh, the Y, right? And the longitude is X. So display XY data. Remember, everything in a GIS is spatially referenced, right? It, it has to know where it is on the Earth's surface, unlike some graphic you've got in Photoshop or Paint or some other program, right? Everything in a GIS has to know where it sits on the Earth's surface. It knows that your X field is longitude and your Y field is latitude, but it says unknown coordinate system here. And that's not good, right? You have to tell it that it's latitude-longitude. And you'll be mapping, happily mapping, your points.